Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Marshall here. It's time for that 4v4 I promised you. On High Daspies. High Daspies. And here are our players. On the north, we have Team 1. Starting in blue, we have Roof Kampa playing Legion, going bots first. Round two, Blood Red. We have Broom the Flirtatious in MLA, going vehicles, 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 and <laughs> more vehicles. Round in yellow, we have Cool Meister. MLA, bots first, bots, bots, and then transition into vehicles. Round in white, we have Mata, also in LA, bots, vehicles, air, more balanced. Uh, I believe Broom the Flirtatious is Broom, I think. Yes. Unless maybe this one's Broom, you know. Maybe Roof Camper is Broom with another name. You know, Broom, broom would definitely go for that many P-Gens, 100%. But yeah, no. So we've got Broom over here. We'll call him Team Captain. Down on the south, in Tother Blue, we've got Alpha IQ3. MLA. Lots air uh, and uh, lots of spears. Oh gosh, we've got um, a unit add on mod going on. Okay, there's going to be stuff in here. I know not. Oh, skipping the wrong order. We've got Yop. Also in a blue. MLA. Vehicles. Into air. Round to green. We've got Ron Paul rushing up T2 with MLA. Also starting with these spears. And then Team Captain 2. Dreadnought in Sandy Brown. Vehicles. Uh, vehicles and bots. Okay. Well. Ha. And Dreadnought and Broom are on the same lane. So, for those unfamiliar with the way that these big games in PA tend to work, the maps that people tend to like playing are these laned ones where you start opposite and it's mirrored all the way and you essentially fight a series of 1v1s until someone falls, which starts the domino. That's essentially the way this is likely to happen. There's more metal on this planet than there is gold in, uh, what was it, the, the Iron Bank, or whatever it was called in uh, Game of Thrones. So technically... Players will be looking to expand to all of these as much as possible, just get up loads and loads of factories. And the best, most successful players will have large factory counts and good infrastructure in their bases. What we'll see a bit of potentially are the assisting production towers, the Faber Towers. They sort of act as a, as a little local fabricator. They can assist and build, albeit slowly. Notice, though, how Broom and Dreadnought have not used them. Dread taking up a lot of space there. Broom staying relatively local and rushing up the T2. So, let's have a zoom out and a look. White and blue here, going to be close to each other. North, white, pushing out as much as possible. Getting vision with the air, which is good. Blue does not have that. As potential radar in places so you can see how far the expansion is but does not have vision to enable any artillery or anything like that lots and lobs coming up from Ron Paul albeit with a, a low, low low fabricator count so they're not going to come up even remotely quickly what's the commander doing? P-Gens at the back lovely, floating on power and still building more, brilliant that's what we'd like to see. T2 up for Dread. Look at that. 
I have no idea what that is. Looks like a gunship of some kind. Swordfish? Alright then. Well, Broom's going to see that T2 is out and will want to start his own now, now that he sees that the slammers are up. But notice, Broom's factory count, 11 to Dreads 5. So he can probably feel comfortable for the time being that his unit count is going to be sufficient to stave off potential slammers. Dread is going to worry about that. Round to blue v blue, pretty neutral here. Legion player on the north, the only one in the game. Got lots of, what's that, shanks? And not a lot else. Struggling on metal, has to expand really. Has to do a bit more work on that frontier. Has 20 fabs. No wonder he's struggling for metal. My goodness. Ooh, now there's a problem. White and blue. Blue potentially pushing into white there. We've got T2 vehicles up for Yop in blue against Matter. Well, I think those T2 vehicles do matter. And this T1 blob is not going to do it. Needs to get that T2 vehicles up in the north of the base there to at least have some defense. Would recommend shellers. Maybe a couple of levelers. Shellers predominantly can duck and weave around the resources. And fire from afar, you need to make sure you have the radar to do it adequately, though. Blobs are starting. Yellow there with quite a good army count against green. Cool Meister against Ron Paul. Ron desperately trying to get up some mines to be a nuisance. Unfortunately for Coolmeister, doesn't have anything to detect them. But the combat fab will go down. If Coolmeister noticed that, he'd be worried. There we go. A few infernos into the mines. Doesn't notice. Continues not to notice. Maybe a little bit of micro there. But not enough. Lob's in danger. Broom and Dread starting to face off now. The two blues. Alpha and Kampa. Still pretty unfazed, but the spears are a thing. <laughs> My goodness. What is that? I think that's a new type of turtle. <laughs> Roof Camper's like, hey, help me out here. And he didn't realise that it actually took a lot of shots to get through. Just need a bit of longer range, mate. That's all. That's all you need. Another T2 vehicle factory going up for matter. Meanwhile, Yop is kind of chilling out a little bit. Needs to get a few more units going. Coolmeister, though, pushing in again through the minefield. Not good news for him. Got lots of AA, but there's not a lot of air coming his way. So potential uh, waste of production there. Lots of spears again for Ron Paul. They don't do a huge amount of damage with these Hailfire missiles. But when you get enough of them, it starts to add up. T2 bots now ready. Fabricator coming out. Oh my goodness. That minefield is paying dividends uh, big time. Albeit only T1 at this point, still paying those dividends. There we are. Orbital? Really, Broom? Not Broom. Dread? Orbital? What is this? Meanwhile... Dread with only 36 in his army count. Broom with 87. But if we look in the army value, they're more or less equal. So that's because of the T2 disparity there. The levelers and the shellers and the slammers making up for the horde of drifters that we have. Broom there potentially going to pull across and attack Alpha. Dread going trying to manoeuvre in between the two. Ron Paul building a couple of mechs because he wants to get in on the action. Wants something to lose. 
We see Matter pushing in against Yop on the other side. Let's zoom around here, super duper quick. Oh, lots happening at the same time. We've got some Vanguard soaking a little bit of the damage there from Broom in the picture. Picture. We've got Meister, not Meister, M Matter in the main. Trying to stave off, but more T2 from Yoppy successfully defends that. Mutually assured destruction between Broom and Dread. Broom coming off more in the advantage, though, it would seem. Because of that T1 production capability against the T2. Fewer T2 against T1 Zerg Rush. Not what you see every day. going to happen again. Yop pushing in though against Mata. Not good. And this is where the dominoes start to fall. The vanguard is in the base. The commander is running away. That is unstoppable. You can see there Roof Camper with his shanks coming over to try and stave off the aggressors. <laughs> That's a big army. A little slow, the commander survives, as does a T2 fab. That's big. Nice defense, although it is a nice hole that Yoppy can now use to sweep sideways into Coolmeister if he so decides. Coolmeister now, though, against Ron Paul. Pincer movement coming in. Broom and Dread in the picture in picture there, once again. Doing what they can. Three battles at once here. Broom Dread. Coolmeister Ron Paul. And Roof Camper Defense. Gorgeous stuff happening there. Broom and Dread. Continuing to play rock, paper, scissors. And continuing to draw scissors against scissors. And then paper against paper, although this time it looks like Dread might have a little bit of an advantage. Has got T2 there. Has got a Vanguard, has got Shellers pushing in. Though this time in the main, Coolmeister has wiped out Ron Paul more or less. The commander is there. Looking very, very flimsy. Dread now pushing up, so we've lost one of our team tours and potentially... Team 1's captain, as well as another T1, Team 1 base there. The commander survives. Ron Paul lives to fight another day. Let's move over to a different screen now. Let's have a look at what's happening. Down there, Yop is about to finish off Matter. Once and for all, Broom desperately trying to survive. Levelers in his face wants to get out of there. Drifters... Running in to save the day, even into Inferno's the <laughs> turrets. Panic turrets there. So many unit wreckages and Dreadnought. Biding his time, slowly going at it and oh, here we go. This is exactly what I meant. Don't need to push into this base and take out the commander. There's a soft underbelly of Coolmeister who was aggressing into Ron Paul. Now having to retreat as fast as he can. Harold Godwinson running away from Stamford Bridge back down to Hastings to meet William of Normandy. Frantic retreats. Just about managing to hold the line there. Keeping his two T2 factories nice and secure. Great moves there. Dread though, thinking, okay... My turn. You've run all the way that side. <laughs> and now once more into the breach. Here we go. Broom sitting. Licking his wounds a little bit. Dread saying, I could do something here. Wandering in. Coolmeister 
Dividing his forces, not necessarily the best of ideas. Straight into Yoppy's forces there. There's a couple of icons I do not know and recognise. Hulkins coming up to hold the lines. Look at the range on that. If they have radar range, those Hulkins will pay massively. <laughs> Coolmeister has pinged this. Even though he has his army here, he's like, Oi! Broom, do something about it! And his army's right here, just chase them! Don't need to do much. Yes, you'll lose a T2 army for that hesitation. If anyone knows the game just a minute, you will have buzzed like Billio. <laughs> Excuse me. What is this? What is this game? Omegas. Of course, after recent balance... Omegas have huge anti-ground capabilities with this turbo laser rapid fire. The T1 fabricators will get picked off like there's no tomorrow with that. I suppose that's the orbital that Broom was trying to get up. The Omega farm down on the south. Did I say Broom? I meant Dread. I keep getting these two mixed up. I'm sure you as viewers know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, well, then we're all lost. Blind leading the blind, as we like to do. That is a, a, a big play with those. Get everything under those umbrellas. But he's content to sit them out in the open. Curious move. Manhattan's coming out from Coolmeister. Might be able to do some damage there, but this is the move. Coolmeister against Dread. Dread has seen it coming a mile away. Yuppie and Ron Paul trying to swoop in. Dreads Commander very close here. Potential hazard. Very T1 heavy army though. Shouldn't be too much of a problem to deal with. But if it hides behind this factory, might do some damage. I think it spies the Commander. It does. It sees where the Commander is. <laughs> oh dear. If Roof Camper was doing something like building units. Maybe something would happen. Alpha could just march north with his colonels and that would be it. Oh dear. Broom's comp. Into the way of the uh, the Omega there. Taking damage to ensure that the umbrella goes up. Or maybe just to soak the damage while it does go up. Either which way. Impressive maneuvers there. Broom and Yop now coming back against Coolmeister. That's going to be the trifecta there. We've got Titans coming out as well. We've got an Atlas. Is that not an Atlas, is it? That's a mini thingy. What's that? That's a Juno. Whatever that is. I think it's a mini Atlas with guns. Never seen one of those before. This is what modding in PA can get for you, folks. All sorts of crazy... Wandering into the range of the Hulkins, not the best of ideas. There we go. But pushing down, that could be a force to be reckoned with, that minor experimental. Dread and Ron Paul holding this corner of the triangle there. Coolmeister trying as he might to get in against the Hulkins. Oh, and the catapults too. That's not going to happen. Someone has to go nuclear. We've got a Manhattan there. You've got to try and push it across. Turtling every which way. Aha! March of the Shanks. Version 3 from Roof Camper. Down to the wall. Let's have a look at this. As it comes down. The Pelter Line. You don't want to go near that. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Don't even remotely want to deal with that. Dread though pushing in against Broom here. Omega's firing from the heavens. With battles in the foreground there. Dread, uh, Broom's base rather. Struggling to stay afloat here. The resources are falling by the wayside. Dreadnought there. 
800 metal broom barely scratching 130 as a constant army down to 20 dread up to 118 I think this is it for broom the Faber army will do you no good here sir and down it will go commander turning tail and running matter with his base coming back up again what is this radar jamming <laughs> wow impressive most impressive looks like a titan need more titans folks broom is going to be the first one to go ironically at the end of all of this is he no Dread doesn't take him out. He goes for the soft underbelly again of Coolmeister. Manhattan's exploding around the equator. Not getting close enough to the base to deal adequate damage. Coolmeister though. Still there but can't break through the Omega defense force. And there's Broom. GGing out of it. The first victim of this crazy game. Nukes going up from Roof Camper, albeit too late. Coolmeister is getting sandwiched. The minor experimentals are not good enough. You need the army counts and none of T1 have them. Trying to rebuild and radar jamming does not help. Maybe a little bit against the Hulkins. But really, realistically, you need an army. You can't turtle until the cows come home. It just will not do. And without their team captain, will Team 1 flounder? Or will they fight back? It's looking desperate for them. Dread there encircling Coolmeister's base. Their econ of Alpha and Dread is crazy. It's even more crazy when you take into account Yop going in against Matter. Not a lot can happen. It's just a matter of time. Really lovely models there from whoever is making these. Just have a look at that. This is a mod, by the way. This is the modding team that have done this. Very impressive. Come on, let's get a new cup up. The launcher was destroyed. Maybe not. Roof Camper now will learn the meaning of army. As he gets attacked by Dre. Woo, hello. That was a Gustav, I think. Yeah, it was. So these things are great against low health units. Oh. oh dear. I hear a Titan. I think it was an Ares from Yop. Goes Roof Camper. Victim number two. Look at that power grid. Absolutely worthless in the end. There he's sniping away at matter. What matters most in this world, he wonders. the commander croaks and the last bastion of team one Coolmeister over here with his comp he's gone a 
All right, ladies and gents, let's let's go and have a look over here at the wall. The mega wall to end all turtle walls. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Here. Oh. Colonels are marching at the end. A little late, but there we go. Have a look at this. Spears and pelters and more spears and more pelters. This, ladies and gents, is a turtle. That was a crazy game. And this is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Good night or morning.